from from being at Hello, welcome to Discovering the World of Natural Health. I'm your host, Claiborne Holtzman. Today, we have a great guest. By great, I mean this gentleman has been around and back again, and we're gonna take some of that knowledge and bring it out in the open so you guys can see Bob Prezioso live and well. How about that, Bob? All right. (laughs) Uh, We were just talking. And uh, you were jogging my memory about how long it's been since we knew each other. Oh, yes. It, it, it's been over 30 years. Uh, I met Claiborne when he was still doing other stuff uh, yeah. be- before he got into this. And uh, to end it all, I was at your store today and talking to one of your employers, employees uh-huh. and uh, told her that you are not one of the most knowledgeable people that I know in uh, health. You are the most knowledgeable. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's a, that's I know that's a big thing to live up to, yeah, but if I ever have a question about uh, supplements, vitamins, or anything to do with uh, health other than what I ask my wife, uh, <laughs> I, I ask Claiborne. I'll call him or go down to his store and... A lot of times he's not at the store when I go there, so. Well, you know, it's, uh, we, we have to, we're supposed to be retired, you know. Uh, in my 70s, going stronger than I've ever gone before. You're I in your it. 70s? Yes, sir. I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> 69, not far away, right? Uh, 77. Uh, you're about to get out of them, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But, and uh, I wouldn't be this healthy if it wasn't for taking all these vitamins and supplements. Yeah, it, it makes a difference what we put in. Yes. Um, you've been doing the supplements for how long? Uh, what, was it from way back when? Way back when. And, uh, way back when. And there's a, there's a couple that I cannot, in my mind, I cannot live without. And one of them is silver. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, silver is the top of the line yeah and uh, it's come a long way too yeah uh, because the colloidal silver uh, people used to be concerned about it because it the thing was and what the medical establishment said uh, you can't take the silver because it'll turn you blue and, and uh, Linda and I actually uh, ran into that man when we were in Seattle I mean he was sitting out there at the market and I mean he would he was somewhere between a Carolina and a Duke blue. <laughs> you know, he wasn't quite that dark, but uh, he was darker. But you know one thing people never talk about, about the blue man? And that was that the ailments that he took the silver for disappeared. Yes. I mean, it's the same with me. Uh, I, I used to get pneumonias really bad. Uh, Actually, I uh, almost died one time from, uh, I had two different kind of pneumonias and a lung infection, and I found out about this silver, and I mean, I had pneumonias every year, mm-hmm. and only this year have I had pneumonia again, and that was uh, due to the COVID. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I have not had that, I have hardly been sick. Yeah, and it's good to build the immune system up. I mean, oh, yes. we've been pumping silver uh, for the last year heavy. And uh, it, antifungal, antibacterial, antimicrobial, we know it kills Mercer, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, as for what it does for the uh, pandemic we're working with right now, the uh, information just hasn't been finalized to say yes or no. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But we know that it's not going to harm you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that they, they, you know, we know kids can take it, no problem. Uh, but there again, you always put the disclaimer on it that says, yeah. uh, you know, check with your physician. And it's amazing that uh, I had. Let me go back up a little bit. I have a uh, cousin 
whose uh, daughter-in-law was in a major car wreck and they wanted to amputate her leg. Mm. That's how bad it was with her. And the uh, husband said no, because she couldn't speak for herself at the time. And what happened was that they started using the silver mm -hmm. and at the hospital, we all know it's over in Durham, uh, what they did was started using the silver and used it in wraps and changing it and all of a sudden the leg starts rejuvenating and regenerating mm -hmm. and uh, she's walking around today with both legs yeah and this wasn't something a health food store did shut up that's linda checking up on you what you're doing here uh, <laughs> uh, sorry about that we we took in uh Lost my train of thought. Where was I at, Bob? You were talking to me. <laughs> you were talking about the young lady that uh, yeah, had the wraps at Duke. Yeah, and uh, the silver. And so the silver is what saved her leg. So uh, it's it's powerful. Uh, you can go back, and it doesn't have to be a lot of it. I mean, five percent goes a long way. So we're happy to know that these things that we have been using for years, and how far back has silver been used? way back Whoa. then because the people who were the pioneers actually used to put a silver dollar in the barrel of water they mm -hmm. heard on the covered wagon so it wouldn't turn green from the heat and the fungus and everything bacteria on there so the silver uh, dollar was used to keep the water pure yeah. when people went across the uh, and settled in yeah. the western part of the country we live in today yeah, people uh, used to have silver buckets uh, and milk. Yep, N milk a cow in a silver bucket and then put it on the porch, and it wasn't going bad. I mean, it. It's like I I have chickens and I don't wash my eggs. Yeah. People don't like it because I don't wash my eggs, but I don't have to immediately <laughs> refrigerate them. Once you wash the egg, you open up that it starts breathing, mm -hmm. and so then it can be contaminated. Mm -hmm. So I mean, country eggs. Uh, my Aunt Mary, when I'd go visit her, um, she had a pantry. And in that pantry, she'd go in and get eggs out of the pantry. They weren't in the refrigerator. Yeah. But due to the fact of the way things are done today, we put them in the refrigerator to keep them that way. Yeah. So. Because uh, you gotta, you got to make them pretty so you wash them off. Well. Well, I'm not eating the outside of the egg shell on... Not that you couldn't benefit from what was on the eggshell, <laughs> the calcium involved. Yeah, uh, but the other stuff that's on there. Well, you know, that's uh, that, that, that's that's potent stuff too. You know, both of yeah. them so close together, you can't help but one get on the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I even use that. To, to, <clears throat> I have my grandson to come over and clean out the chicken coop and okay. uh, put that in the compost box so it'll sit for... Uh, a good time because ch chicken manure is hot and it will burn your plants. It, it is. I remember uh, one of my cousins growing up. I guess his dad gave him that job of cleaning the chicken house out, and he put it on the field. And actually, it was a couple years they had to wait before they could use the field because they put the too much nitrogen yep. on there from the uh, chicken poop. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. When I lived at the West Coast, I, I used to go to a chicken house and get chicken manure <coughs> mm -hmm. and then take it and place it in my yard and spread it. Uh, I mean, there, there was nothing growing there anywhere. <laughs> uh, and then the, the following year, I put it in my compost box. Okay. And, I mean, I, I had an amazing garden. I mean, I, nothing died. In that California heat, you know, I mean, it would be 120 degrees is what they say, an inch below the surface is how they measure it. How, how is the moisture there kind of contained so it doesn't get so much that nothing grows? I mean, is, how, how often does it rain? Uh, February. Just once a year, <laughs> so to be? Yeah, I mean, when I moved out there, uh, which was back in the... Uh, 
end of the 60s, early 70s, uh, it would rain in February in Southern California. Hmm. You know, I mean, the rest of the year, uh, you might have some sprinkles here and there, uh, but uh, very little. It, extremely low humidity. I lived in the high desert, okay. which I still love. If uh, Linda would go, I, I'd, I'd be out there. Okay. Somewhere in the high desert and just uh, no humidity or very low humidity. You can water your plants. I mean, they, they, they have plants that uh, are resistant to the heat that we can have. But I mean, I'd, I had a cherry tomato plant that volunteered and every, for, it was three or four years that I had this thing. And I'd be able to pick uh, two quarts a day off of that plant because of using natural stuff. I, I don't believe in all of these chemicals. Um, no, and fortunately, my wife agrees with me. Um, yeah. You know, and well, you've made a major you've made a major change uh, by how you are eating and how you're preparing your food, how you're spending your money to make the land because you guys moved out yeah. from the city yeah and uh, you got the opportunity to be able to uh, do something that's more conducive to prevention yes yeah uh, we look for uh, <clears throat> having uh, natural stuff uh, using natural uh, fertilizers etc on the stuff natural feed uh, we look not, uh, you know, when we go to buy seeds, look for, uh, home, the, no, the, it starts with an H, I guess. You, you want the ones that are homegrown, have been there for yes. years and years, and yeah. keep uh, producing and, that way yeah. instead of and being a, a, a hybrid? Yes, oh. no, 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 no hybrid stuff, no GMOs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, and we, we both are pretty healthy. Um, very few health problems. You know, I mean, I, I do have one major health problem, and it's uh, I think it's from when I was a kid, and I used to get the a, the big salad bowl, pour a box of Cheerios in there, <laughs> <laughs> two cups of sugar, uh, and on top of and, on top of what was already in there. Yeah, uh, and uh, at least a quart of milk. Okay. You know, and I'd sit there in front of the television down in the basement of the house where we had a little uh, den. Okay. And I mean, I, I'd eat that every day. You know, and, and I, I, I have diabetes now, and I, I think that was a contributing factor. Well, you know, you, you burn out the pancreas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, but, I mean, other than that. But were you able to sit still and watch TV? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think so. We, 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 you don't remember yeah. that far back. <laughs> I don't remember that far back. You know, I mean, that, that was over 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you were just a sparkle in the, the eye. Yeah. But if you think about it, I mean, you can take uh, the little packs of uh, oatmeal. And uh. if you'll take a, I take a little sifter. And you take and shake it, dump it in there and shake it. There's equal amount of sugar as it is to the oatmeal. Oh, I've never, I've never it, done that. You'll get a, you'll get a couple of tablespoons out of a little, little bag, a morning serving. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, or I take peanut butter and mix it in with the, the oatmeal. Yeah, but I bet you're using something else too. I bet you're using some honey on that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and local honey. Huh? Local honey. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, not, I, not the stuff that you find in the, the grocery store because most of the time it is not local. So the immunities that it carries are not the what I need for around here. Yeah, I, I like mine in the comb and when my bees yeah. will let me rob some from them. Uh, and even in the springtime, it has an added bonus in the comb, honey, is that you got the bee pollen. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can take that pollen and ingest it and whatever plants that came from then you will not be susceptible to the allergens from that because the bee pollen will help I'm gonna call it neutralizing it 
See what I mean? He's the most knowledgeable person with this. <laughs> he comes up with all these, you know, no, I love detail, my, detailed things. I, I've done without bees for last year. I finally got a hive of bees back, which was a swarm. In other words, mm. yeah, they they flew and Joe got them for me, and I said, Joe, can I get them bees from me? He said, Yeah. So we made a deal, and uh, then I had Roger uh, knows more about bees than I've ever even thought about. But he helped me work them, and now we're trying to make me have a, a second hive of bees. And, uh, and we're letting the bees make their own queen. Mm -hmm. And that is just phenomenal to see. You take the lady out of the hive, or don't have one in there, they'll take and pick out a cell, and take a regular bee and make it into a queen bee by feeding it royal jelly. Mm -hmm. And the royal jelly is what's going to make the difference. Yeah. Because uh, it's fed for seven days to the regular bee, but the rest of them get it, if they're a queen, for basically around 30 days. So, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's good stuff. Yeah. I mean, what I, what I do, I don't have bees. Mm -hmm. Linda's asked me for a few years to, about getting bees. I don't because I have eggs. And a doctor friend who lives a quarter mile away has bees. <laughs> he doesn't have chickens. Okay. So we trade the, the eggs for the honey. I think that's a good deal because because yeah. working with the bees now, uh, I told Roger, I said, you got a full-time job because of yeah. with that. And uh, it's not like it was when we started out with them years ago when uh, worked with Coastal Bee Plant beekeepers and uh, you really didn't have to do too much to the bees they kind of took care of themselves but now with all the pesticides and stuff that oh, are there yeah. you got to make sure they're plus the mites mm -hmm. uh, anybody that is a beekeeper and raises bees and you can get some good pure honey from them uh, it's whatever they charge is not too much I'll tell no. you that no so, and you know Linda's planted two pollinator gardens mm so that the bees can come over and eat the get the pollen from our plants and go back to the doctors and right. I can get the honey. You're getting your own honey back. Yeah. Uh, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, going way back when, when did natural health become a concern to yours that you wanted to investigate it? Well, Linda got into it first. Uh, and the, Linda, uh, my wife, is a nurse practitioner. Uh, she, when I met her uh, 49 years ago. Okay, that's the year I was born. <laughs> uh, when, when I met her, I lived in California and she had come out there and uh, we met and got together. Uh, she worked in a doctor's office and didn't think that she was good enough or smart enough to, to really to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. And when we moved here, which was 1985, so that's 36 years ago, okay. I convinced her to go to Nash Community. She got her two-year RN. And over the years, uh, the kids helped me in this, is harassing her uh, till she went back to school. She went to uh, Chapel Hill to get her BSN. Okay. And again, harassing her, she went uh, did online with University of Phoenix to okay. to get her MSN in nursing education so she could teach. And kept harassing her, and finally she went to East Carolina and got her nurse practitioner, and she's been doing that since she retired from the hospital. And I and I think it's ten years now. Wow. And she loves it, but she she has always been into you know like. Most women start out with, with convincing men that we need to eat healthy mm -hmm. because, well, you know. They don't like being widowed and have the tendency we die before they do. So yeah. if they really like us, then they have to do a little extra work to make sure we stay yeah. around. So, so if they're not encouraging us to eat healthy, they don't like us? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it don't say stupid across there, does it? Uh, uh, no, but... Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it is good to eat healthy and to live healthy. When, when you're talking about eating healthy, 
How would you define that? I'll, t I'll tell you what I had for lunch. Okay. My son came over yesterday with his wife, uh, and they made uh, a uh, meatloaf for lunch, but uh, they came back in the evening uh, because my wife just had oral surgery, so she's not, she wasn't up to doing too much cooking, and they made a salmon loaf. Oh, beautiful. Uh, and Louie took the salmon and rolled it up for the, for the base and then put about uh, two inches of crab on the top. Okay, getting better all and, and And then lined it with shrimp. <laughs> uh, I ate a goodly portion last night and uh, I, I was out uh, running errands today and was going to stop and grab something and I said, no, I got food in the refrigerator. And I opened that refrigerator and that thing just looked at me and I took it out and ate half of what was left. <laughs> so you didn't eat it all, you share, you're going to share a little bit of that. Yeah. Uh, no, that's going to be my lunch tomorrow. Oh, okay. I'm going to hide it from her. <laughs> you got that right, Linda? <laughs> yeah. Uh, she can't be watching this program because she's at work right now. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That See, I'm smart because... I get to take care of all the animals in the house and she goes to work. Mm. So she's not in my hair, what there is of it. Yeah, I understand. I got a buff and shine on mine. Mm -hmm. So not, not a problem whatsoever. Um, so we talked about a little bit about how you got it started and how food made a difference. And we talk about always on this show here that to let food be your medicine Mm -hmm. and your medicine be your food and that was the founder of uh, medicine as we know it Hippocrates and that, that was his favorite saying and uh, if we can do it because what we're up against Bob we're up against trying to figure out how they can make us buy what we're advertising yeah and that's where the difficulty comes in and us making decisions we've got to look at what is in it what can be prevented and make it change um i brought this along just for kicks um, th this this is a little book and this is the book of disease prevention and treatment 131 evidence-based protocols now that right there says a lot to me. Yes, evidence. Uh, evidence. Yeah, not theory. Mm-hmm. To combat diseases of aging, and Bob just said a while ago, seventy-seven. I said seventy-two. As far as I'm concerned, that's aging, mm -hmm. and we've got to do something to help us not yeah. age or keep us from. Uh, what do they say? Do it gracefully. Yeah. I mean, our, our smarts haven't increased since then because five weeks ago I was climbing on my neighbor's roof and fell off, uh, hit a railing, broke four ribs, and then bounced onto the deck. Uh, you know, and people that know me are really not surprised that I'm up and around. Uh huh. You know, I mean, I, I have seen people who have had similar injuries. Uh, if they didn't die, they, they were slowed down a lot and I mean I don't think I've slowed down any what are you doing for the bones are you taking any calcium or oh yeah in any other things that you're doing right I and I will encourage people to do this uh, because at one point I was a hospital chaplain and when people come into the ER they didn't know what, you know, if they were unconscious, nobody knew what they were taking. Right. This I have it. this list that I carry in my wallet. It's all of my medications. I, I did update it every once in a while. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and this is... Got some B complex, C, vitamin D, fish oil. Yeah. You know, multivitamin. Zinc, zinc turmeric. Zinc, zinc and turmeric, yep. Yeah. And then there's some other things that are considered over-the-counter. Yeah. And uh, 
And you just mm. actually you just had that updated. Yes. Uh, yeah. June, yeah, I just uh, did it June third. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, since we're pulling out wallets to make sure. Yeah, but I would encourage everybody to make a list of their medications and have it accessible if something happens that if you got to call the EMTs or go to the hospital or even to the doctor I mean I just love it and the doctors the nurses love it because they go to the hospital and they're asking these questions I said wait a minute and I pull this out and I said here go make a copy of this there you go and, and it saves them time you know I mean it's it's really nice okay um, uh, how do you keep a wallet so thin Hey, look, I don't have credit cards. <laughs> credit cards? <laughs> what are they? I don't have them at all. But behind my driver's license, I've got my, uh, my name, address, uh, medical conditions, and in other words, uh, and one of the allergy, no, I'm, I'm, I'm allergic to uh, dye. They have like they do the the, the red dyes or the red dyes or any dyes that, they use that, for blood testing in the yeah. hospital, and one of the things that I need people to know that epinephrine, which is given a bunch, yes, I'm allergic to it, uh. and so that's one of the, usually the comebacks that they are able to say, well, give me epinephrine, you know, it'll be all right. Yeah, I can't do it. Uh, yeah. I had the dentist, and they were going to work on a crown I had. And uh, he was working on it, and all of a sudden, I'm going like uh, phasing out. <laughs> and so finally, we got through that one. But he yeah. said, "No more for you." Yeah. And that was just with a little filling there of your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the things you need to know. Your doctor can help you get that taken yes. care of. Yeah. I mean, one of the medicines that they prescribed for me uh, when I was in the hospital with the ribs was, uh, can I mention its name? Gabapentin. Mm -hmm. And I was taking this for the, for the pain, and all of a sudden, this one night, I had an anxiety attack. And a couple of days later, I had another one which was real bad. Mm -hmm. I, I, it would, lasted about four hours. Wow. Uh, and I went online and pulled up the, the description of it and the side effects, and one of the side effects of it is anxiety. You know, it's, it's not one of the major ones, but it, every doctor it, it that I have you. seen and the pharmacy, they know, because I have called them and told them, put it in my record that I am allergic to this. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, Anxiety can make you suicidal, and you don't want that. You know, yeah. I mean, if you can go back. Yeah, you know, that that just kind of opens up a window or a door. And let's go back and talk about some of your previous things you've done in your life. By one as a chaplain, but you also you had an office people game too. Um, yeah, and you were doing what there? Uh, I was the director of Crisis Ministry Center. Okay. Uh, I did that for eight years. Uh, when I when I was hired, it was a part time, half day, four days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and with a lot of prayer and God's grace, we took it uh, to full time, five days a week. Uh, became a United Way agency. Uh, uh, did all, all kinds of things the, the one year what, what I'd like to do was give away food we did financial assistance to a lot of folks but if I could give them food so that they could use their money to pay their bills mm -hmm. which we would uh, counsel them to do uh, we saw uh, them to be a lot better and the one year uh, that I documented uh, it was the most that we had ever given away and it was 98.6 tons of food given away in a year. I don't think they got that. 98.6 tons. So you take that, that's 188,000 pounds. Because tons is two times what you got. Yeah. Two times the 98. Yes. That's a lot of food. That was a lot of food. I was sending food to the food bank every week. 
uh, I was sending food to agencies that gave away food in five counties mm -hmm. because God opened the doors. I mean, it, it wasn't me. Well, uh, he, he, yeah, God, God you know, still Tom, Thomas and Howard, when they were here, I mean, they would send me uh, once a month a 50-foot uh, trailer with their dented cans and broken cases. Hmm. Uh, and uh, then they asked me if I could handle frozen and refrigerated stuff. Bowden Electric gave me a truck that I could back up to the loading dock and they could load eight pallets at a time into that truck of close dated refrigerator and frozen food. I mean, I had to get rid of it fast, mm -hmm. but you know, it benefited a lot of folks in this town and uh, you know, Thomas and Howard is gone now. Yeah. but. Uh, there's a time and yeah. season for everything, and yes. we can learn from it. There's yeah. other things that are available now yeah. uh, people, that people look into, uh, and especially with the epidemic having been here in the last year, uh, with the crisis of food and being able to have a basket of passing around and distributing it to the people. Yes. It's, yeah. uh, so, and, and I'll tell you what, what I saw is good food. Yes. I mean, fresh vegetables. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Things that are there that uh, you, you normally, when you go shopping and you got to choose between your rent, you got to choose between your food, uh, most of the times uh, we need a place to stay. Yes. You, you, first, you need to pay your rent. Because if you don't have a place to stay, what good is anything else? Mm -hmm. Next, you need to pay your electric bill. Because you want to be able to heat your house, you want to be able to cook and, and do those things. After that, if, if you have money left over, then you can think about doing other things. Yep. And, yeah. I, th and I think we, there's a lot of teaching that needs to be done. Yes. Uh, I think some of the things that you did these number of years ago have kind of fallen through the crack. Yes. And we need to pick back up and make yeah. our community stronger with people being able to help one another physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, and most of all, being a friend. Yes. Well, I mean, uh, for, for, first, you know, I'm responsible for me. Nobody else. God gave me a family to watch over and to help. Mm-hmm. I am not responsible for them in their actions. I'm responsible for how I react to uh, act to them, you know. And th and then, you know, you expand it out into the community. And to be, to be a friend, uh, the reason that I was on that roof that I fell off, one of my neighbors he couldn't get up on the roof or, you know, to do some painting and fix a leak in the chimney, and that's what uh, another friend of mine and I were doing. We're doing that. Trying to help somebody. Trying to help that? somebody. They couldn't help themselves. Yeah. And make yeah. it happen. Yeah. And, you know, I, mean, I, I never asked for money because money's never been important to me. Mm -hmm. what, what is important to me is people. You know, and I want to take care of people. So, you know, if I can't make you uh, feel better about yourself, then I'm not doing what God called me to do. Um. You're, you know, I, I, as you are speaking, it's at a point in time that it should say, Amen. And Amen is like sick them to a bulldog. <laughs> yeah. And so we get it in that aspect of reaching out. And when you touch the lives of people, the relationships are the only thing that's going to last. Mm -hmm. The food's going to be gone or spoiled. Yeah. You know, uh, even things can happen to our residents, happen to our, our bills that we pay or don't pay, you know, or should pay. And, and then we've got to get it to the point where we know what to do to help take care of ourselves. I, I was looking in here in this one book here, and it had in, uh, an influenza. You, do, you, do you carry that book in your store? No, this book came to me from a company called Life Extension. They are a powerful organization 
that helps people be educated. Um, we can work with them, and we can. There's some tests they can do, uh, but this was this was given to me by a sales rep mm -hmm. by the company. Yeah, you could do tests there too. We do um, hair, I, yeah. hair analysis. We do. Um, um, we call it. Uh, I, I remember coming in there, and you know, you looked in my eyes, and you told me what kind of. Uh, Things were going wrong in my body, and what I needed to straighten it out. And Eyes are windows to the soul. Yeah, I, I, I tried to listen to you. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I can be a little rebellious at times. Uh, that's in a man's nature. But we have a uh, a unit called the Compass, and what it is, it's a computer program works on biofeedback, and it actually has in it over somewhere between 500 and 550 products listed in there are herbs and stuff in different forms that the computer goes in and from your energy and the energy of going there it will make recommendations as to what it thinks you need mm -hmm. and uh, that is it's so amazing it's, this is how simple it is Bob we have cars today vehicles today you drive it into the whoever's going to do the work on that vehicle. They plug it into a computer. Mm -hmm. That computer analyzes as to what's going on and not going on. And so it will help us not have to chase things down as to what needs to be done. It will give us a reason and a product to say this can benefit you based on what the computer says at this present time yeah so yeah that, I mean, that, we're, we're, we're old enough to remember when they didn't have warning lights <laughs> <laughs> that they actually had gauges that you could look at and yeah. you and, and you know it would it would stimulate Tem your degree. thinking yes yeah, temperature gauge yeah temperature gauge oil gauge you know, besides the fuel gauge. I mean, my wife's car now has a thing in it that tells you how many miles you can go before you have to stop and get gas. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I used to have to calculate that in my head and yeah. by looking at the, the odometer and the, the gas gauge. And, we, and then the needle, we put gas in it. It doesn't go up to show yeah. full. It's over here. It never moves <laughs> because the... And I guess they still have to use uh, the thing in the gas tank, you know, yeah, the, the float, the float, to show where we are. And the difference is, it comes to us in a light instead of a needle showing yeah. us. And that is a I don't indicator trust lights. needle, huh? I don't trust lights. And so, well, probably if we talk for a little bit longer, there are probably be some other things in the realm of life you don't trust because of what has happened in the past yes and uh, yeah experience is the best teacher and and if you don't listen to it it'll happen again <laughs> and would you say that that is one of the issues we have with they say quote kids today is they know it all I knew it all when I was that yeah. age yeah and and so people if we'll realize it <clears throat> that it's part of who we are as human beings mm. that we are less willing to listen until we get to a point where we have to. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that the kids today may not be in tuned as we are but they still got a lot of great benefits in their mind oh, yeah. and their heart and the computers and stuff. Um, yeah, if I need something on my computer, I call a 13-year-old. Yeah. So uh -huh. I, I think we need to get back to one thing that I think is very important, is that when I was growing up, normally if mom and dad were working, grandma or grandpa were in the home. Mm -hmm. And so the children had the benefit of learning from the seniors mm -hmm. and I think that if we would do more of giving instead of putting our seniors away is giving them a chance to be able to uh, 
teach and learn. Yes. It's so important because when when you pass and I pass and we've left this world. I'm not leaving. Do you're gonna take it in the rapture and go before it gets here. Uh, we we where was I going with that? I got to think about leaving. Uh, <laughs> but if we will take Boy, that was good. You did. Yeah. You, you just don't even put it. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one of the best things that I have done in my life. Okay. It's my maternal grandmother, uh, <clears throat> at her hundredth birthday. Linda had bought me a video camera uh, for Christmas that year and gave it to me early. My grandmother's birthday was December twentieth, and I sat with her in her apartment that she lived by herself with the video camera for two hours mm. and recorded that uh, and then I had a friend here in town who uh, the church that he was at they had a stack of VCRs mm -hmm. and it was a VCR back in those days uh, you know from floor to ceiling and I asked him uh, if he can make copies for me and he did and I gave it to everybody in the family I, and my grandmother told her life story from when she was born in Austria-Hungary mm. before World War II, before World War I, before the invention of the airplane. <laughs> and her and her girlfriend forged their father's signatures. They rode in a horse and wagon to the ship to immigrate to the United States as teenagers. And they came over here and, uh, and all the things that she had gone through in her life and, and by the time she was a hundred, she had buried three husbands and a son. But she was healthy as a horse uh, because she ate right mm -hmm. and took care of herself. She never had a driver's license. She walked or rode a three-wheel bicycle. Uh, she lived in Miami then. You know, and, and she took care of herself. Now, she also did at a hundred have a gentleman friend. I picked on her about him because she was robbing the cradle. He was he was only ninety. <laughs> That's funny. But they they would yeah, and there's a relationship. They would meet every week, you know, one or two times uh, or three times a week uh, at the senior center. They would play bingo together. They'd go out to uh, IHOP and eat. <laughs> you know, he'd bring her flowers once in a while. They talked on the phone every day. You know and. That is what gave her life a reason to continue. And she enjoyed that until he passed away talking to her on the phone. <laughs> I'm glad I forgot what I was saying because that was a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it's uh, back to eating healthy, eating natural stuff. You know, I mean, uh, some of the things that she made, uh, yeah, I, I ate because they were good. Uh, but it was nice and healthy and it was stuff that she grew in her backyard uh, and I mean I, I just except for the cookies that she made <laughs> and she would make uh, noodles she would roll out these noodles and for my birthday every year I got a shoebox full of noodles oh god you know, uh, the, the kids knew, don't touch dad's <laughs> noodles. <laughs> well, my grandmother would make these Hungarian cookies that she rolled up and with... Uh, Did you save any recipes? I didn't have any recipes. But did grandma do that on the uh, she, camera she, or did... Uh, no. Okay. No, I mean, we just, we just sat there and, and talked. Uh, you know, I mean, she told me when... You know, she worked on the farm, and uh, you know they'd see a snake. She'd go over and grab it by the tail and whip it like a bull whip. And pop his head off. Right? And pop his head off. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you got people that are scared of insects now, let alone a snake, and nothing bothered her. You know, in the natural health realm, we've got to understand being healthy. Our body was designed to make its own immunity. Yes. And we've got to realize that we've got to give it that opportunity mm -hmm. and quit robbing it of that ability to yeah. heal itself. Yeah, by filling it full of chemicals. Yeah. 
Uh, so you got to understand that we were designed to live and never die. That's why Adam and Eve got the butt kicked out of the Garden of Eden because they couldn't live in the perfect environment and not be perfect people. Yes. So you can't get away from the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual of what's going on. We've got to understand the depth of who we are. You were talking about anxiety. Uh, and we, I believe, can make a difference if we will start looking into why we are different and want to be different just because we're going back to the basics. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's just like you're talking about getting in touch with the honey and the honeybee, getting in touch with the chicken and the eggs and not worrying about the eggs if they've got a little yeah. poop on them yeah. and, and steam and, washing and, them. And whatever. my goats. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it's those things that are important. And I am seeing um, more people realize that they've got to have self-sufficiency in what they need. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know more people now than I have because we were doing chicken raising uh, 16 years ago or more and uh, how people say, what are you raising your legs for? You go buy them for a dollar in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. you know. But I can't buy that embryo that's still alive in that egg that I need to help me. Yeah. So I mean, pe people don't think about it. I, I had a friend who used to uh, raise uh, Egg, chickens to get the eggs for, for, for Purdue and she was telling me that you know when she had to cull the eggs for size and all of that that there were they couldn't give the eggs that they were going to throw away because of the antibiotics and the chemicals that were put into the food for these chickens to be able to produce mm -hmm. and that's what you're buying at the grocery store yep you're you know look, look online uh, Look around uh, free range chickens. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to be a lot healthier. And again, look for something local. You know, I'm not going to order free range chickens out of Florida or Missouri. I want them from here because there is, to my, in my mind, a natural immunity that is going in with those uh, chickens that are laying those eggs. Well, that's the same way with the honeybees. Yeah they are working in your locality they're getting pollen mm -hmm. nectar from within five mile range of the hive and uh, they're going to bring that back in they're going to process it naturally and uh, we're going to get the benefit from it mm -hmm. sure. yeah so uh, and I, I'm glad to see more and more people doing it Oh yeah. and asking questions and one of the greatest blessings we've been able to have Bob is to help people on their journey of doing it God's way yes and that's because you, and what's happening is well for one people are missing out on reading the Bible but if you go back to the book of Genesis and you'll find out how we got here and how it was made so we could be able to become whole as a person and be able to fight against the stuff because there was everything in that garden to make it so they would live and never die. Mm -hmm. And once you understand that, you can start putting the puzzle together yeah. and realize that we can do better for ourselves and we can quit taking the manufactured stuff <clears throat> that is full of the chemicals and poisons. I mean, there is a book, I've got two books on just dyes alone and showing the poison that's in red dye number six or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what we're doing. And you got that in your jelly beans, you got it in your different mm -hmm. seasons of the year for different colors. Yeah. And well, you got those things in there that are not good for us. Yeah, we used to have, uh, when we lived in California, uh, we had a food service that was all natural stuff. And uh, the man that I talked to uh, initially about getting it, 
he said, we have to put carrot juice in the hot dogs and the bologna because people don't like the color. You know, I mean, they're, they're putting natural stuff in there to, to give it color so it was a little bit more attractive to eat. And we eat by our eyes. Yes. And uh, yeah, so, sometimes we eat too much by <laughs> our eyes. <laughs> but, but, you know, there are <clears throat> books that are there and with the internet being the way it is today uh, and you're going to get a lot of things that said you know this hasn't been proven or whatever but a lot of things have been proven uh, <clears throat> if we will just do that well, yeah. it, yeah, it hasn't been proven by the FDA which is uh, funded by big pharmaceutical companies <laughs> so you know do you, do you want to lose the money in your pocket or do you want to make people healthy so what do you say, Bob, for people that are just listening to us and they're saying, I really don't understand, I can't see the benefit of, how do you project what you do for yourself to someone else? I tell them what I have done and how it has affected my body and my thinking. Uh, an another thing that I do is, is talk positive stuff to myself. And when I had the anxiety attack, God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. So if I don't agree to that, I'm calling God a liar. The same way when somebody asks me, you know, and it's a normal question, how are you? I'm wonderful. <laughs> because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything that God made is wonderful and my soul knows it well. Those are scriptures. That's God's word. You know, I mean, I have God's word. I have the things that he created for me to eat to make me healthy and keep me healthy. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to tell people, yeah, I've had issues. I've had problems. But when I did how God has ordained for me to do, as God has ordained for man to do, that I am much healthier, I am much happier, and I can relate this to others and encourage them to do the same. You're talking about encourage. I've got a magic wand, and all you got to do is take that wand and say, I want what I want yeah what do you want <sighs> that, 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 that's a big door but the door is you've already said it earlier in the conversation you want what's best for the other person mm -hmm. and that's what I was leading up yeah. to because we've discussed that in the first part of this yeah. conversation yeah. and the thing about that is your joy comes in seeing someone else yeah. have what they want to have and become yeah. who they want to have. Probably no greater gift can you have now would be grandkids mm -hmm. and helping see what they're, oh, yeah. what's going on yeah. there. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the biggest grandson, uh, which is really not mine, my, my son married a woman that had two boys and, uh, you know, we treat him just like we treat all the rest. But the, the biggest one, Nathan, I, 12 years old, I had him driving my truck, and then I showed him how to drive my tractor. And I said, there's the lot out there, go cut grass. Mm -hmm. And that boy got out there, and he just absolutely loved it. It's something that he will never forget his whole life. You know, I mean, the older I get, the dumber that I get. Because, uh, like, you know, like we said earlier, you know, when I was that young age, I knew everything. Well, in order to know more now, I need people. The, and, and the, like the knowledge that you have. It's the thing that, and I say this story very often because it means so much to me and it has been such an inspiration to me, and that's my Aunt Margaret. Uh, I went to visit her at a uh, nursing home where she was in a later life and she was in uh, 80s or 90s and I went there to see her one day and it was one of those gloomy 
one of the days that you nobody comes visit you at the nursing home and you're there all by yourself and she said Claiborne make me a promise and when my aunt Margaret if I can do it it's already done mm -hmm. you don't even have to tell me what it is just point me in the direction she said make good memories because that's what I'm living off of today mm -hmm. yeah and one of the things that I am so proud of is that Bob you have good memories and you have an audience that will still listen and that's powerful no I am so proud of Linda and you and the things you do to yes she may be in the allopathic realm but she's also in God's realm of his spirit listening to what needs to be done there so it'll get accomplished yeah I mean she has patients that come in and she will think of uh, natural stuff holistic medicine before she will sit down with a prescription pad and if she can get someone going uh, eating healthy taking the right supplements herbs doing prevention yeah doing prevention that, that I mean she she's comes home and tells me stories of some of the patients that she has had she don't give me their names because that would be unethical and uh, confidentiality breach but yeah you know, I mean she, she can say well the, the, this person I told them about silver and they started the, the gel mm -hmm. and they started using the gel and they had had these problems and they don't have that problem anymore now she didn't write a prescription well I'm going to do this as we close Get with Bob, get him to come speak to your civic organization that he can bring some knowledge and inspiration out there to make a difference and a change. Any last word? God is good. Couldn't be better. Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and may he give you his peace that the world cannot give. And remember, it's all natural. I'm your host, Claiborne Holtzman with Bob Prezioso. <laughs>